okay, you're in charge of this. <laughs> Where the building's closed, I'm going to leave this door open this evening where it's going to get kind of warm in here. Go ahead, Mike. Just ask for approval for um, Approval. We're going to uh, seek approval for minutes starting April 13th. April 13th. April 20th. Through April 20th. And the 27th. And 27th. May 1st. May 1st. May 4th. And May 8th. There you go. Motion. Second. And second. Yeah. Those in favor? Uh, review of the treasurer's warrants. Payroll payroll warrants to be signed at meeting. Well, we <coughs> you. Okay, payroll warrants. 62, 64, 66, and 71. And then also accounts payable warrants to be signed. 60, 61, 63, 65, 67, 68, 69, 70, 72, 73, 74, 75, and 76. Motion. Motion. Second. Mike. All. Good. Okay, now you can open session. Open session. Anybody like to speak today? Go ahead, Brian. Yes, well, um, I'd like to ask you guys to reconsider this 4 o'clock meeting time. I find it very inconvenient and quite hard for people who are working to make it here. So if you could think about that, I'd appreciate it. Anybody else? Bill, bro. Bill? Yes. Hello. Oh, sorry, to can see you last minute. Go ahead. Brian, Brian Burritos. Um, I myself have sat in on many night meetings and on various committees for years and used to dread it. However, I can appreciate the fact that they are <coughs> meetings because people that work can make them. Four o'clock, most people work, the average working person works till five o'clock. They can't attend these meetings. These meetings are public meetings. I would really ask you, will you consider and put them back to the later day, later time <coughs> Mr. Rowe? Yes, uh, it appears that you're on plan on the select <coughs> board meeting per month. I I think as needed, but uh, maybe that's kind of the standard. And uh, the there. standard for years and years has been two meetings per month. No, I, 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 meant, I meant that would be our minimum. <coughs> Go ahead, say what you want to say. Okay, so next month, if you look on the very back page mm -hmm. for June, we have our regular meeting on the 14th, and then what I've set up is a training workshop on May 18th for the roads for the board, because we won't be making any motions. We did that last month on 420, and then I also have the board going to train with myself on elected officials training in Skowhegan on the 24th. So instead of having just meetings, what we were looking at was having workshops for training for the board as well because this board is completely new. So, okay. but the I, time. I do feel that two select board meetings per month is more appropriate <coughs> so that the town can keep abreast of what's going on. All I would say to that is if, if we need more than one, we'll have it. If we need three, we'll have three. That's it. Anyone else want to speak? Rich? Yeah, I just want to just touch base on the 4 o'clock. I literally had to take time off of work so I could attend this. I think it would be a little bit more convenient for people at work to be able to attend more. Melissa, well, I'm sorry. Um, are we going to be able to uh, speak as the meeting goes on when it comes up to the topics that other others of us are interested in? That's at, at the option of the board, I guess, yes. Okay. It's conceivable. Thank yep. You. I'll wait then. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, that's, that's fine. So um, we're
we're going to be at Wednesdays because the planning board is on Thursdays. So would a 5.30 time frame work better um, instead of a 4? Because they have jobs and they're out. So I'm kind of looking for a straw poll of what time people are looking for here. Because when we get to the end. My personal opinion is 6.30, like people have a chance to go home, take a shower, eat their suppers, and then come to their meeting. But 6 could be done. But 5.30 is pushing it a little, I think. Because a lot of the younger parents have kids at home that have to be looked at, uh, fed, etc. So I'm thinking 6.30 would be a much better time. It worked well for us. You want to do a raise of hands for six and then a raise well, of hands? Well, I think we discuss that one. We'll okay. We'll take it under consideration. Okay. Open session is closed. Mm -hmm. Back at the yes, the session is closed. Uh, unfinished business with the 6A. API technology, computer repair efficiencies for the office. Okay, so um, I sent this to you all so you could review it. Phase one is to go ahead and correct um, with uh, our system with Microsoft e uh, 365 um, and then 365 essentials so I can actually communicate with email to the board. Uh, and the board can actually check their email and it stores everything on our system here in the office. You could be on any device at home. And basically this protects you so you're not using your personal devices to store data. Uh, by logging into 365, this will give the board the availability that all their emails are saved and cataloged here in the office in a, or in a cloud. Also, uh, I need to have... Uh, the block server put into the wall here and get up to the counter for the new system. But the biggest thing here is the protection to secure the data. Um, right now, we are uh, non-compliant with GASB 54, GASB 58, and Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Um, we don't have virus protection on anything right now. Um, we are completely vulnerable. So this first one is $770. And I would, and it's thirty-seven fifty per month for the office, and then fifteen dollars per month for the board members. And this sets everything up secure, so all data is stored. Um, but right now, I recommend taking seven hundred and seventy dollars out of the contingency, so I can ask API to get up here because uh, social security, credit card, driver's license, and other personal information is at risk right now. So. I would ask the board to motion for me to get this part done. The second one is for a total of $1,350, and this is all about efficiencies where we don't have uh, computers, uh, a computer at the counter, they're walking back to their desk, then they have to get up to go to the printer, then they go to the counter. It takes excessive amount of uh, labor time, and for $1,350, that actually hooks us up so I can get a Wi-Fi in here. and literally have a laptop in here connected to my screen on Office 365. And then the TV that we had dreamt of, this is all phase three, so where the, the people here could actually see that. So right now I don't have the availability, we tried with tablets and stuff, to get onto my computer and we can't. So that one outfits the counter. We just got a free printer from Kiyosera for the new BMP app. And uh, so for a total of about $22.20, um, we're able to uh, get everything completed in the office and get that efficiency started. And the new photocopier was installed already. So um, I would ask the board to at least uh, approve phase one. Uh, but phase two is a crucial part, too, to start saving money. Have we called any other companies or anything about services to find out its cost? I mean, is this... What it's going to cost us, man? Are you or is this? It doesn't matter because Office 365. No, I know that piece, but yeah. there's a fair chunk there that's that's labor. Uh, yeah, this is regular prices, and this is one of the best companies, and they guarantee all their work. 
and that's what I want is somebody to guarantee this. Right. API Tech handles a lot of municipalities with this, and uh, they're always available. They can literally log in uh, from their building to help us on stuff. Um, I just think with the uh, with the employees that we have that this is very beneficial, especially with all the trio data. We've got to start taking care of this better. So and that's the answer to Dale's question. Did we get another one? No, because everybody that I found is just from the backyard. People that have come here. And we've used them. This is the only professional one that I know of that is part of what I've done. And phase one is what time frame? If I can like get it all done in literally next week, they'll be here. They might be here Friday. Hmm. Can you send that to us, Matt? Yeah. When? Yeah. Gary, you can send this one over. The, uh, the codes that we're in violation of. Did you get um, mm -hmm. what, what, what Those were our audit codes. And so that's, federal, that's a federal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the a uh, is we have credit cards, we have driver's licenses, we have social security numbers, mm -hmm. and um, you're responsible to protect that information. And as the board, it comes on your back. So for 770, and to do the Office 365 in the backup, I recommend that we do that immediately. The other part, you can look around, but there's a lot of labor to get my Wi-Fi into this wall on this side of the office so I can communicate from here. And it has to be secured Wi-Fi. That's my only. The first component, personally, it just seems like that's just basic. We should be protecting the people's information in today's right. right. Or that's all the information we have. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, and that's going to back everything up. Yeah. Gentlemen? Thank you. Um, I think that makes sense to protect the information for the town and for all the people, yeah. personal information. And I can leave the second one for now. It, uh, the question is, do we want to investigate further the costs? I, I think the parents are pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to, this information has to be secure. And if we're not secure, we're probably liable. If you have yeah. another API <laughs> people. We haven't done the basics. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so I guess the question would be do we want to research costs a little more? I think we kind of support the concept. Absolutely. Support well, there's a lot of efficiency by having everything right at the counter because then the manager is able to come out as well. And the manager, most managers, well, some managers, are. Uh, are trained to go into BMV and do registrations, um, just like any of the jobs that clerks do. Um, I've had all that training as well, so it's important to have another machine for customer service. Now, when you that say, would be phase two. Yes. Yeah. Now, when you say another machine, you talk about adding a computer, or with this new system, computer. are we just going to cloud systems where we don't have to have a computer here and a computer there and a computer here? That everybody's working off your sign in and working off me. No, we'd still be working off, but the countertop computer is so we can literally go up and do registrations for Trio, Moses, credit card, and they're not at their desk. So, Correct. They I, can understand. Be. I understand. There has to be another computer, but it is tied in. Actually, the, the server in the office is Doreen's on her desk. So all the others are kind of like yeah. slaves off of that. So, right, because I mean, with our work, we don't actually have computers anymore. That's what we do. We, we actually, and then we all feed off it. We don't have that big. So, we don't have anything that big. We never will. <laughs> that would be too much. <laughs> My thought is, I mean, it just seems like we should have at least more than one quote. And if, if the other quotes come back even and you think this one's better, that's fine with me. Um, but. My yeah. thought is the first step of this phase one, as you put it, makes total sense, and we should we should yeah, investigate that. The managers can go <laughs> home as well. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity with this to be able to log in uh, for myself um, that I could actually log in and do work at home as well, um, and uh, so it makes work a little easier at times as well. This is part of phase one. Yes. Oh. Yeah, but it also makes easier communication. Uh, document transfers to you so you can store stuff on your tablet and then the second phase was so you could bring your tablets in and all the information you have everything would be electronic and we'd be ridding ourselves of paper for the board because you all have tablets so 
And so the second phase actually brings that Wi-Fi together component in here so we can actually operate up the meeting. So, how, how quickly did they come up with this whole estimate and this evaluation of what we needed? Uh, Derek came here. He's worked for me before. Um, nice gentleman. Uh, and uh, was here about three hours looking at our system. Uh, and then after that, he went back and wrote the quote up for you, and I sent this out two weeks ago. Mm. It's been hanging around, so. But I don't have any other way to protect the data, so. <coughs> so, let's table this until we can get at least some comparative quotes. <coughs> but I think we're inclined to advance the security. Right. Yeah, phase I, one. Yeah. So yeah. a motion for phase one. Yeah. Yeah. If you can make competitive. Yeah. Quotes. So we do phase one. No, we'll revisit it when we get close. Next okay. meeting. Yeah. We'll pay yep. next meeting. Well, that's a month away, and you realize that all data is vulnerable to a breach. The thing is, if we start out with one company, you can we, right, and we want continuity through the. Okay. <coughs> We've been in. This condition for a long time. I think we should fix it, but probably do it as efficiently as we can. Yes, item A Gray Road, letter of determination of status of Gray Road in questions in question from 0.6 miles to 1 mile ending just past Lance Burgess Driveway entrance. You got the votes for Canyon Yeah. That's good. We, uh, envelope. We, see you. <laughs> we, see, we received uh, <clears throat> a letter sure. from uh, an attorney, Lance's attorney. And you're all going to get a copy of it. Um, do you still want to do that? I would be happy to. There's more people than you expected. Mm -hmm. My wife wanted to read it aloud, and so I don't think she's going to be, thought it was going to be a full house. But. Uh, I'll read it. Um, yeah, I just thought it would be good if you could hear it. Do you need this, Terry? Yeah, I only ripped the heavy. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to I'm not going to read all the legal citations because it will get a little bogged down. Jonathan Cottle dated April 13, 2017, and of Attorney Jonathan Huntington dated April 23, 1995, concerning their opinions that the Gray Road had been statutorily abandoned by the Sangerville Selectmen in 1995. The statute outlining how a public way can be statutorily abandoned is set forth in Title 23 MRSA Section 3028, not Title 30A MRSA Section 3028, as noted by Attorney Cottle's letter. The statute says that a public road is presumed abandoned if it is not kept passable by public funds for 30 or more consecutive years. As our Supreme Court noted in Town, in town of South Burb v. White, the legislature intended the presumption to be unavailable where funds had been expended for maintenance at any time during the statutory period. The same court pointed out that, quote, a court will not likely find the public has abandoned a highway easement, end quote. 
In 1995, Attorney Huntington argued that the road would be discontinued by abandonment if it was not maintained with some regularity over the past 30 years. Attorney Pottle adopted the same view by referring to Attorney Huntington's letter without any further comment. The Maine Supreme Court clarified its point that some intermittent maintenance rebuts any idea that there is a presumption of abandonment in the case of Earwood v. Town of York by pointing out if there are even isolated acts of maintenance, a presumption of abandonment does not arise. That case makes clear that maintenance with some regularity is not required to keep a road from being considered abandoned. In this case, the facts are that there were many isolated acts of maintenance performed by the town on the Gray Road from the 1970s through 2016. Number one, the town maintained the Gray Road to the Cayman property in the late 1970s. Number two, Sangerville Board at July 1, 1980, meeting voted that road repair would start on the Gray Road in July of 1980. Number three, Attorney Huntington acknowledges that gravel and culverts were put on the Gray Road in 1982 in addition to the creation of a turnaround. He acknowledged another culvert installation at some other time. Number four, the Sangerville Town records include a document dated March 1986 which lists the Gray Road with a comment that it should be, quote, maintained, passable, and repair as necessary, end quote. That was found by, that was found by Interim Town Manager Matthew Pennyo. The copy attached. Number five. Former Sangerville Road Commissioner from 2006 to 2008, Thomas Avalar, has given a statement that the town plowed snow and maintained the gray road during and after mud season. Number six. Charles Bean worked for the Sangerville Public Works Department from February 11 to September 2008, February 2011 to September 2011, and has given a statement that he plowed the gray road for the town. Number seven. At its April 2016 meeting, the Select Board had acknowledged that the Gray Road is a town responsibility and approved the work by the town to improve the Gray Road. Number eight, at May 10, 2016 meeting, the Board noted that, quote, the area from the pole to the Burgess driveway has never been abandoned, end quote. At that same meeting, the Selectman approved a motion allowing the use of town equipment to start rebuilding the Gray Road. Number nine, at its June 9, 2016 meeting, the board approved ditching and replacement of culverts on the Gray Road. Number 10, at its August 25, 2016 meeting, the Sangerville Select Board entirely rescinded the 1995 and 2013 actions of the Sangerville Select Board. Number 11, at its October 2016 meeting, the Select Board noted that the Gray Road project has been completed. The town of Sangerville paid Herrick Construction $11,000 $29.50 in 2016 for just the ditching and culvert work on the Gray Road. Number 12. At the Sangerville Select Board meeting, March 2, 2017, the board voted to complete the Gray Road extension in the coming summer. It is obvious from all of the above activity that the town of Sangerville recognizes the Gray Road as a town road and has intended to keep it passable by the public. Attorney Pottle argues that the August 2016 vote to rescind the board's 1995 and 2013 actions is invalid because there was no new evidence establishing, establishing that from 1945 to 2016 there was regular maintenance on the Gray Road. It is plain from the Supreme Court cases a town does not need to show regular maintenance of a road to keep it from being abandoned. A town only needs to show, quote, funds have been expended for maintenance at any time during the statutory period, end quote. Title 23, MRSA, Section 3028, parens 2, provides that the determination of the town officers regarding the status of the town way is binding on all persons until a final determination has been made by the court. Attorney Cottle is right that the 1995 determination by the Select Board was binding at the time. However, the determination by the Select Board in 2016 correcting the 1995 error and acknowledging that the Gray Road is a town road is binding going forward until there is a court determination otherwise. In summary, there have been more than enough instances there have been more than enough instances of expenditure of public funds by the Sangerville Select Board to improve the Gray Road from that 1970s 
from the 1970s to date to confirm the acknowledgement by the Select Board in 2016 that the Gray Road is a town responsibility and to justify further town maintenance of the Gray Road. If this matter were brought before a court, the court would rule that the Gray Road remains a public road. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, we have not, uh, well, Eden Peabody has uh, received a copy of this. Um, and we have not had a response from them yet. Mr. Puckett's uh, out of town on vacation. We, we, we have, uh, Thad told us that Pottle, Mr. Pottle is in Kenya, I think. So he's, he's a ways away, but we have we have had no feedback from them yet. So, do you have a question, Melissa? Yes, uh, I understand that there was a opinion from the Municipal Association. We'll get to that one too. Okay. Well, uh, I noticed that this letter was dated April 28th. What was the date of the Maine Municipal Association opinion? Hold that, please. The my take on that the municipal opinion was in regard to the latitude that a board would have with that particular status. So if the status of that road was abandoned and only thing that remained was a public easement, according to Maine Municipal which ironically enough is the exactly the opposite of what we were directed by Peabody. According to Maine Municipal, Maine Municipal, the board would have no authority to spend any money there we're without legislative approval. Now you said But it. the statute hasn't been established. This letter here doesn't speak what to... What do you mean the statute that's already a state law? They cited <coughs> an actual law that went into effect in 2015. <coughs> what we have here is a letter from an attorney arguing the statute. So are you representing the town of Sangerville or are you representing Land Burgess? Who? The board. We're, we're representing the town of Sangerville. Okay, what are you so you're, you're, look, you're, looking to, you're looking to protect the town of Sangerville from further litigation, correct? Uh, there has been no litigation yet, but I certainly hope there is none. That's right. We're trying to protect ourselves from that, correct? So, I mean, here we are looking at a letter that obviously when Mr. Burgess went to his lawyer, the main municipal information wasn't included in what the lawyer got, other, or else the lawyer... It wasn't relevant. Why wouldn't it be relevant? State it's law to status. To He's only arguing status. Now, I'm not an attorney. I could be wrong. But that's how I interpret it. He was arguing what you could do based on that particular status. This gentleman here is not arguing. He's, he's saying it's a different status. If he's right, let's just say, for example, it is a town way then the municipal uh, ruling is irrelevant. You've but got, I don't know that it's a town plan. You've got two different things going here. First of all, there's a Bingo. state law. You're you, exactly right. I am. There's a state law that says that a board can act on a, on a public easement, slash, and they call it public easement slash private road. I saw it. Right. Without a vote of the town. It, even though we did it last year. Even though we did it last year. And, and I understand why we did because we were counseled that it was perfectly fine Absolutely. to do Absolutely. But that doesn't mean so. because we had one bad counseling, we keep going on and compounding our efforts. And what her. concerns me with the whole thing is, is that back in the in this, uh, late winter, early spring, uh, I was told by the manager that it was wanted, there was an individual wanted to put on the agenda, was the town going to, was maintenance on that section of the road part of the public works budget? 
So it, irregardless of whether you continue to do the work to finish that, that section of, of graveling, the ultimate question here is, are you taking half a mile of town road, adding on to the already 30 miles that we already have, that everybody's complaining about how much it costs? Because if you've gone and given it another step yet to I, say... I, you're way ahead of yourself. We're not close to that. You're very close to that. No, we're not. You're skating the edge of it. This board has, is not close to that. We are literally between two rocks. As far as I can tell, you need to take it to the town to a vote. And you know, a smart board, why take that on yourself? Take it to the town. As soon as we have a legal opinion, we would do that. That is, this is where we're at. You was 100% correct. We were advised last year, this is the direction, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then this year come to be, this is where this letter come from, because we was determining status. So we received this status five minutes before the last meeting, mm -hmm. and read it, got to read it while we were sitting here. So I can read this status myself, or opinion of status, and I can read this multiple ways. I can read it and agree with it, I can read it and I can find holes in it. So now we have this, which was what our lawyer says. In the meantime, Mr. Burgess's lawyer sends you this. So now you have two lawyers with two completely different statuses. Now, my opinion, our lawyer has a copy of this. This lawyer is basically calling our lawyer out. Our lawyer should be responding. Yep. And to compound that's where we're at right now. I mean, Eden Peabody obviously is at odds with the Shea letter, okay, in terms of stats. That's, I think, if you read them, the two individuals are. Now, with procedure, Eden Peabody is also at odds with MMA. Eden Peabody clearly said to me on the phone, and I think I, I, think I can speak for Dale, because you shared this, that a public easement. A board had every right, in fact, in the case of this job, a duty to do it. He specifically warned us against taking it to the legislative body. Now, I'm not saying I agree with that or disagree with that, but that was the counsel. What was the basis of the duty? He said, he, the argument are, went essentially this way. You're going to spend, if you, if you take this to the legislative body, and you have enough people angry that you're doing that road, and they don't do it, you will spend five times what it costs to finish the road to put up a, a defense against that litigation. That was, was his argument. That was his advice to us. So, but, but what was the overriding reason why the road needed to be finished? Well, uh, I mean, we started it last the, year. We made it, we the, had a... The state law talks about fire protection and police protection. That's what we were, we were told last year, right? Okay, fire protection and police protection. But that becomes true then of every long driveway. That's not the argument they're making. But that's the argument I'm making. Because you're setting a precedent. We are doing where anything. You'll be down on Kittredge Hill. You'll be down on George's Place. You'll be down on Doc Shea Road. You'll be down on Fierce Road. And it goes on and on and on. And people go out in these far off places and they build their houses. They know they're on discontinued roads. This is Maine. It's your right. You can go into the bushes and pull up the gate. Uh, but it, this but is we not the, this I know. This is separate. But you're opening the door to it. We're and that's not what opening. I want you to consider. That's all I'm asking. Consider okay. the door you might be opening. The problem right. is, is we opened the door last year. With but wrong, we then let's, slam the wrong gate. Pull of, then let's slam the gate and say, oops, we made a mistake. It's not which that was, simple. It's not well, that was the, right the, There's one thing being forgotten here. The one thing that's being forgotten is that three board members last year made a motion to accept an agreement yeah. with Lance Burgess uh, in a public session. And the other problem that I have with this right now, and I've discussed this with the attorney, is that the board agreed to do this work, including the $5,000 of hauling, which was the gravel and... Uh, the gravel Lance was donating, the bulldozer Lance was donating, and the fabric. So we must take this into consideration that we still have a board motion from last year that made a verbal contract in open session, and then it's carrying over here. So this is very touchy ground of where we're at. Attorney Paul said to me we have a contract. Uh, I, 
That's what I, I feel I, with this. You are welcome to disagree with him. I'm saying that's what he said to me. So this is the rock and the hard place that we're stuck between right now. So you're looking at 4,800 to 5,000 to go up there. All we have to do is haul the gravel and dump it. The rest is Lance's part of the contract, verbal contract. Other than that, literally, <coughs> I researched the cases, and some of these cases have gone upwards of $100,000 in attorney fees and court fees to do this. Um, I have made my recommendation to the board, and... I have to tell you that sometimes just doing things that are on the cheapest part, whether it goes against everything in your body, um, the, the townspeople need to consider this at this time because the town does not have the money, one, to enter into a lawsuit, nor does the town do that. Does it set well with everyone? Probably not. But there was a verbal contract, and I think we need to remember that when we go forward. Okay. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, in the reading of that lawyer's letter, they did not distinguish any part of the gray road. They speak of it as the whole thing. And it's two parts. Because the majority of the gray I, road... I, told is, you, yeah, wait, I, I don't think there's any use in us litigating these two letters. We're not qualified to do it. We all will have different opinions on it. The fact of the matter is, this board has been presented with this letter. And we have another opinion from an attorney that we paid for. And we've had counsel on the phone that we paid for. Uh, and some of it is certainly not declarative. Uh, so that's where we stand. And uh, ironically, I think we've spent enough in legal Three already Three to nearly complete this project. Yep. $3,000 so far. That's how ridiculous this could end up being. Uh, I'm not making a recommendation anyway. And to be very clear, in, despite of what you may be receiving in emails or reading somewhere else. I only want to do what's right on this road. If this road was incorrectly worked on last year and there's no reason for us to be spending money on there and that's the right thing to do, then so be it. And if we get sued and the legislative body doesn't want to do it and it costs them a hundred grand, I will be very sad by that. But that's the outcome. But nobody's trying to hide anything or trick anybody. This is where we stand. So until E. Peabody can, I figure, this is my view, E. Peabody really owes us an explanation. They should yes. defend their letter, defend their counsel on status, or not. They should come back with everything that this letter says and explain why their opinion is correct. That's my view of what I'm hoping they're going to do. But back to what Bill said, you're absolutely right. But the problem is what you said. Everything you read, the entire road is discontinued. No, it isn't. It was at one time. It is. No, it Originally, isn't. they discontinued the entire road. Correct? No. By abandoning I it. have no idea. They did. When they went and tried to fix it, they never opened the lower part of the road. The only thing they did when they motioned the second time was they clarified the discontinuation from the teenies up. That's they never right, said, but they never said the lower part is open. No, that was enough. So there, I mean, there's more to this than just the upper part. Uh, that's truly it, not it's, correct. It is very convoluted. But so, and that's part of the whole thing to get that. That's why we have this. This is it's right. trying to get it fixed so that we're not doing this. We're doing this the right way, and what's best for the town. Well, I'm glad that you've gotten a little further than we did in it. If we had gone through this process last April, we wouldn't be here. And we couldn't get an opinion last April. Well, even if you got it, it might not have been worth much. No, one thing I want to clarify, though. It, it, just give me one second. When we, they will go along with this. When this whole thing came up last April, the reason they were saying that the 2013 discontinuance was flawed was because why? It wasn't reported where in the Registry of Deeds, correct? That was correctly, yes, right. that was part of All right, now, the fact of that was, that requirement only came in in 15. So, there was no requirement in 13 to trot it down to the Registry of Deeds. It was legal, and was that's where we got led astray, and that's where we veered off course. And the other part of where we veered off course was, oh, there were school buses turning around on the brow of the hill. Honestly, that Melissa, it doesn't, I mean, I, know, I understand it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. matter. But there it, is a it whole really list of wrongful... That all of that got twisted around before it ever got brought to the board. 
and that's why I really want to see this cleaned up right. That's why that's we are moving very. What we're trying to do. Okay. I mean, but it really would be helpful if people would trust us. If you're hearing something that doesn't make sense, why would they be doing that? Call me. Call Matt. Call Dale. Call Jody. We are going to do this correctly as best that we can. So. Yes. And whatever we do is going to happen in this room. That's correct. Hopefully after 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> the only comment that I would honestly would, would met about that, what you just said, this is the second largest group I've ever seen in this room because in over a year. Because you're so controversial, we love you. Well, but I'm just saying, this is the second largest turnout in a year for a board meeting. I don't want to That's be crazy. Yeah, I want to be able to say, go to it and okay. do it. So I, I think we need to table this issue until we get some clarity. Hopefully, we get some clarity from Eaton. We don't have to table because we never we don't okay. have motion. There's no motion. This is just information. We're just this gonna, is just public record. But really. So does anybody else have a question regarding this road? Go ahead. Whether it's this road or any other road that Melissa mentioned in the past, here, how do you abandon any road if it's in place and you will plow it once, you have to wait 30 years? Nope. There is a statutory process and it's very deliberate and it's step by step and there's a, you can do it. And, and you have to notify a butters and they get compensated and it's all right. It's, it's actually pretty straightforward. Any of us could do it. But it needs to be done correctly. And, and that's so where it gets fuzzy is this 30 year abandonment. Because if you can prove somebody put a culvert in there, now you got a debate. Yeah, right. And that's going to go on forever. Correct. Correct. Different, totally different process. So if the town, at the next town meeting said, we want to abandon Road X. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say we finish this project. It costs us six grand. We go up and it's all done. We now could start a statutory abandonment for a point beyond that and down over the hill. And we have to notify people properly, there will be compensation paid, and it will go before the legislative what body. A point beyond that? A point beyond Lance's place. Supposing we decided so is, we want to abandon all of the gray roads. We could, we, well, you we could do that, but yeah. you'd be buried in lawsuits, because there's all kinds of people living up there. So and we've been doing work on there for decades. <laughs> but a, a re more realistic, in my opinion, there's a portion of that road beyond Lance's that no one has lived on for a very, very long time. Uh, it would be reasonable for the board to start an action there that ultimately would end up with a legislative body with all the proper approvals and we could abandon that portion it of that road. It should be abandoned. That's a whole other discussion. If we can get the major. bottom done, then don't, yeah, I, that'll be next. I we suspect that if right. we could get this done for a few thousand dollars, we'd be smart to do it, but we'll see. That stretch down over the hill beyond Lance is is would be subject for considerable expense yeah. bringing it up to a certain standard. You are kidding. I know it. So, so anyway, that's yeah, to answer your question, there is a proper way to do that. You don't have to wait 30 years. That's on the next. You didn't put the rope together. That's good. Uh, Abby Fowler, you've got a little break. There. <laughs> In between bad moments, good moments. <laughs> Abby Fowler Deed, I had the uh, Historical Society, uh, was in today. They signed it. It's back to uh, Kim Cavanaugh, our town, one of our town attorneys here in Dover, and that is being registered with the deed. So now we can start thinking of selling that building and repurposing it. The Brownfields grant was completed on that. So that big, large space up there is available. So we all should start dreaming of what type of business we could do in that building to benefit Sangerville. So. Yes. Wow. The journey is done. Now we're on to building. Uh, next item, uh, Grant Road. Discussion regarding the gate. You have an update there. I sent the letter out there and uh, Dr. Andrews has joined us this evening and would like to speak regarding his part. Um, I had spoken with him and I had spoken with you about the possibility of leaving the gate there uh, as long as it is not locked and so the landowners can do that. All landowners down on that road uh, received uh, letters on that and at this time I think Mr. Andrews should talk and see what we can do. If we move the gate it probably will get moved 
uh, they would move it down past Maxfield Corner, which is about 1,200 feet from the current location, but then it's on private property. So right now it's not. So, Doctor? Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I do you want to come up here and sit? Understand. So you wear you do I understand. Mean, yeah, I've like never been to a town council meeting before, so it's all new to me. Um, well, welcome. <laughs> the thing I've never been before, and it, it seems like if the town was going to discuss a, an item that affects somebody, I think everybody should have been here, and I should have been here the first time. Let me just explain something to the situation. You might know it already. Sam Sullivan was a landowner at the time, and Carl Varney had owned Mr. Armstrong's land down there prior, and if you all know Carl, um, he tended that land and brought the skidders and everything through it, and the road was a mess. It was virtually impassable except to maybe ATV traffic. And trucks were so couldn't get through it, especially in spring and summer, it was pretty much destroyed. And that gave Stan Sullivan the uh, rights that he thought to block the road completely. I bought the property three years ago, it was embroiled in this big problem between the landowners and everything else. So my attempt to ease things through and to make Stan happy and everybody happy is I put a gate up and I gave all the landowners the key. But after the first week, I never had a key and I just had a little clip because it was enough to keep the people out. People were going down there and it was just like a mud run. It was so destroyed. And even the area past the public easement is all demolished and you really can't go through it. And everybody was pretty happy. And when Mr. Armstrong bought the land and he wanted a key, I called him up and I said, don't worry about it. I said, it's just a clip on it. Use it whenever you want. And he knew about it and never had any problem until now. I said, I didn't know it was a private easement or public easement because it's been going through in different channels. Peter Ritchie, who owns the land down past it, prior to him buying Stan Sullivan's land, put $11,000 to replace that road. I say road loosely because it's really a trail. I mean, it's not like a place someone can run a car through. And, uh, the thing was, I, I just don't see a problem Mr. Armstrong's having with it because the gate is open to fire trucks, police, or anybody needs to go down it. And anybody feels the need to go down it, they're welcome to go down it. It's just, we had no way to stop the damage that was going on. And people were vandalizing things, they were running across the fields, everything else. I said, I don't know what I can do. I don't know whether, if I could get council to turn that road from a public use to a private easement. Or I don't know what would help, but like basically we're trying to protect people's property down there. Um, David Gallet is one that kind of was happy about it too, because his land is still messed up. I know Mr. Armstrong is probably going to timber up there, and you know I, I spoke to him when we had an argument about uh, the key. He wasn't really happy that there was a, a gate there, and I don't know, understand why, because it basically protects his property from vandalism and everything else. But um, you know, like I said, if if the town wants to maintain the road that a public easement, I believe, requires, then that's fine. But like I said, someone put $11,000 into it now on a public easement road, which I think maybe was a bad investment, especially since that, you know, the town should have taken care of the damage and gone after Carl Vonio to try to fix it. But still half the road is impassable. And uh, like I said, I'm, I never blocked the landowner from using his land. And it's a public road to nowhere. It's 1,200 yards and it ends. and like I explained to him, my, my thoughts, and I'm not a legal person, is that you can sit on the road, but because there's private property all around it, you really can't get off the road. <coughs> so like I said, I'd like to, you know, have this looked at further and, and see what you decide on it. I don't know, I don't know if it, I assumed it was discontinued because it hasn't been worked on for 30, 50 years, and I think it keeps going back between public and private easements. I'm really not, you know, familiar with the... Uh, what it means and stuff. Public easement. Yeah, it was discontinued after '65. Is that the right question? Abandoned. 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 Abando
And if people want to use their property, they're welcome to it. So, like I said, I, I'd like people to reconsider this, or if there's something I can do to make it, you know, work with, with the town, uh, I'd be very happy to do it. So, I've been out there eight times now. And, I wish I had been out there. Yeah, eight times, and uh, it does have a very large carabiner hook located underneath the top rail, and there is clearly <coughs> visible a lock on the top. I had to look at it twice before I could see the carabiner hook, but there is a carabiner hook under there, and I was able to open the gate eight times. There's also a section on page 65 in Municipal Roads Manual on Chapter 6. Page 65, barriers on town ways and public easements. Some towns put cables or wires across roads that have been discontinued or closed to winter maintenance. These cables can injure snowmobilers or other off-road users, vehicle users. Main law requires a municipality to clearly mark any cables or other barriers across the townway with fluorescent tape or similar materials so as to be visible at a reasonable stopping distance to persons on snowmobiles, ATVs, dirt bikes, and similar uh, vehicles. The law only mentions townways, but we recommend marking barriers across public easements as well. The statute requires the municipal officers to cause these barriers to be inspected periodically to ensure that the markings remain visible. And that's what you have on barriers. So there are barriers that the town does put up. Um, so that's here. The town. The town. And so your decision now. I almost honestly, um, I'm a little frustrated, I guess, because personally, this to me isn't about you, it's not about this, it's not about any of the landowners. To me, this is no different than the Gray Road and any other road that we have in our town. If it's the determination of that road, if that's a public easement, and legally it's not supposed to have a gate on it, then I don't think the gate should be there. Well, then, but if it can be there, then I'm all, you know what, I, that's fine. I don't have no problem with that. A, so, but last fine. meeting we was at, I, at this point, I guess I really feel that we were advised without look, all, all of the things were up front. Because that part of the conversation wasn't brought up last One barrier I just found out. Well, that's the town. Right. So I really think that the town does what that. we should do is... That's, 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 that's not town a private correct. Right. What, what we were asked, asked after last time is, is that gate legal? And you said no. It's not. Because that's it's how they made our ruling. If it's not legal, it's not legal. Why is because it legal? Because private it shows land. an easement. You don't have any proof it's an easement. That's the other, that's what we need, is right. we need the proof yeah, of these Do we have proof of these We do not have proof. It's, it's, it's so another attorney we, court case. I was say, do we know that it's illegal then? We cannot call it illegal for sure. Okay. Well, then that's a different That's problem. why we rule this the way we rule. This is we was advised. And the ruling's still against me? Well, I, I would say we we would should discuss this again, because now we're hedging. Um, you got Jody? Uh, oh, Brady, no, Brady. Uh, the Brady, I fixed them. <laughs> Right, go ahead. I think if you read the letter from Lance's attorney, it'll say that your ruling on the road stands until it's taken to court. Um, John and I have no problem with the town gate, but we have problems with the private gate. Do you have a problem with a private gate being left open? Yes. Because as long as that gate's there, you're starting to establish um, blockage of that road. And the longer it's there, it reaches a certain number of years, and there's no removing it. And there's, you have no recourse when somebody locks it. Um, Dr. Andrews said he gave all the landowners keys, but never locked it. Well, we never received keys. Um, we've seen it locked. Um, if Dr. Andrews sells his land, who becomes keeper of the gate. Um, so I have no problem with the town blocking Is it. there an easy fix here? Yeah, the town moves the gate. Or the, could the town buy looks, could the town buy Mr. Andrews gate for a dollar and you have a lock it? I mean I'm just trying to I don't, the I don't, other way the other problem that I don't know, that's legal, but I'm just I saying don't know. the I other thing that's going to happen is once it gets past Maxfield Corner it's on private property. And then everybody beyond that, which I don't know which landowners would get blocked, that is not a town issue. 
So if once right. that gets moved down past Maxfield Corner, it's a civil issue. this is all civil. Right. And that means that if we can't work a compromise out between all parties in this room, then I can guarantee you're going to be spending money in court down the road. So We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> but I can tell you that it will get blocked. So I'm asking people to start learning to compromise in this community and stop the paths that they are on because this has got to like solution. <coughs> we've got to have compromise. And if the that town owns it, well, we know that it's legal it. for the town to gate that road. Right. It, it is legal for the town to gate that road. So if you own it, we can just if we have an easement. That's well, well we <laughs> we need to know. Well, you need to have the clarification before we can finish this conversation. Yes. Pre sixty five, post sixty five, Matt. Four thousand dollars a kid. No, 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 no. no. Was, we just it do a little be, research. It should we, be. Some we should know when it was abandoned. I've got some research for you. That would be great. That would be awesome. Great. Okay, here is the twenty twelve town report. Okay. The year ending twenty twelve. This was done in March of uh, thirteen. Article 21. See if the town, pursuant to 23 MRSA 3025, will vote to accept the dedication made by the residents of Norton Mills. Quit claim deeds from interested parties signed by the residents and copies of the unregistered deeds on file in the town office. So there was never any reason for Matt to have to go over and file those deeds because that was before the 15 change of law. And the town voted to accept Norton Mills. Now, y'all know where Norton Mills is, right? Mm -hmm. That is a regularly used East Sangerville Road in the summertime that gets a lot of traffic out across East Sangerville. But it's not ma maintained in the winter. Correct. There are no gates across it at any point. We just don't plow them in the time. Okay? But that road is sitting beside probably the site of the oldest site in the town of Sangerville, where the mill was by Black Street. That was one of the first places that were ever settled in the town. So no mills had to have been there way before the 200 year mark. Mm -hmm. So the retaking of that road in 2012 was a total waste of Dave Pearson's time. Because the landowners, no doubt, has changed many times over the years. Long habit <coughs> of what was done with that road. Everybody knew what was done with that road. A lot of places in town fall under that. And if we go back, and I've, I've heard from three different people in the last week, people calling me up and saying, God, our roads are in such a mess. No, they're not, because lots of places shouldn't even be questioned at all. But in these little corners, yeah, you are going to have to straighten out where it is. And in 15, there was a change in the law also that requires <coughs> that any abutter on any road that um, was abandoned, whether it's in, whether it is a public easement or not, if someone goes through like Danio did in Rexher Road, they can personally sue who's ever going through. Correct. So the, the and I think that that particular little piece of information needs to get put out, maybe on the website or something, so that people across the town know that there are other ways of handling their problems other than getting the town to take an easement because. I'm particularly worried about the lower end of the Grant Road because it's a range road going directly over into Parkman. Two years ago, three years ago, the state was very hot to make everybody list their public easements. And now we have to go and register them the deeds. Why? So the utility companies can go in and see in the registry of deeds where the public easements are. So if we're busy taking public easements, we're making it easy for utility companies and you know what I'm saying without saying the word, come across the town. We don't want to do that. We want to make ourselves a hopscotch. We don't want to line it up in a straight line right into Parkman, who already made a deal with the devil. <coughs> so that but with regard to this particular road, we made a ruling last meeting under the assumption that that is the advisement. Uh, yeah, under the advisement that that was a, uh, an illegal game. Sorry. Uh, then it is an illegal gate, right? Well, if, if that's the question. If the, <clears throat> under everything, Maxfield Corner showed the end of that road. We just had not done maintenance at, from that house beyond. Maxfield Corner was the stopping point, and that's how the public easement came about. When I researched that, that's what I saw was Maxfield Corner as the end point for the town to go any further. So... So if there could be or should be a gate, that's where it should be. 
There definitely can be one there. I mean, that's, we can't that's stop private people. property. They do whatever they want. Right. Where it is at now, that's town. That's still part of the easement. Could we get that the public easement changed to a private easement? No. Not anymore. That state. That doesn't work that way. That's what right? That they but they can't go any, they can't do anything past that mm -hmm. because for Maxfield Corner on, that is all owned. It by the land owner. It's deeded and discontinued. That's very, very clear. Right. And, so, and but then, before that, it's not. It right. doesn't show that. Right. Would, be a, would a gate be cause of an action uh, to damage to a public easement? Say that again? Would a gate in that area be cause for uh, action for a damage to a public easement? At the lower end of the road? At the upper end of the road. Where you are right now. Again, if the town was owning that gate under barriers in the municipal roads manual, as long as it's clearly marked, that's up to the town board. So, on this, this state, again, you have the right to block town. No, I understand. The yeah. town could block that, but the yeah. town is the only right. entity that has the authority to block that. Correct. Road. If you have an easement, and they can only go 1,200 yards to Maxfield Corner. Right. Um, I think we need to move the gate, research the the easement. If, the, if it's an easement, the ruling would have to stand. It's not really a choice. If it's not it, an easement, then is it a public easement or a private easement? Because the town hasn't done any work on it. It's, part of it's, it's still considered a public. The easement. example that we gave it's a few space. minutes ago about a, a statutory yeah. abandonment of the upper end of that gray road. If we did that, the public easement would remain under current law. We would still have that. And it's not I, new to me. We could gate it if we wanted to, but the landowner couldn't. That's, so that would be analogous to your situation, possibly. I, I think we need to feel like we're very confident in the status of that road. And I have a public easement, if you want me to read. Chapter 5 in Municipal Roads Manual, the voters of the Town or Village Corporation may authorize selectmen or assessors to use municipal equipment to maintain and repair private ways public easements within the town or village corporation. The voters can determine the level of maintenance the town will provide as there is no requirement that public easements be kept safe and passable on a year-round basis. The voters can designate that some public easements or portions thereof be maintained at public expense while others are not. In short, municipalities have broad discretion in deciding how to care for public easements. Again, that easement that's there is basically an ATV or 4x4 four four trail and a way for electricity. In contrast with townways, private individuals may repair or reconstruct public easements. It would seem that private individuals should be able to do so in order to permit them to use the easement, especially since the municipality is not obligated to maintain public easements and is not liable for any maintenance it does provide or for any defect in a public easement. Further, these same private individuals often have private easement rights in the same way and at common law an easement holder has the right and generally the duty to maintain the easement. Main Superior Court determined that upon discontinuance of a public way, individuals abutting the way have very broad rights including the right to maintain the way with a respect to the width and character <coughs> that was sufficient to them as long so long as their exercise has some reasonable basis and was within the scope of the prior public use. However, in the event that private repairs are performed improperly and cause injury, the person who made the repairs to a public easement or contracted for them may be personally liable. In addition, there are other related questions that as yet are unanswered, such as whether it is possible to overburden or surcharge a public easement, in other words, to increase its use beyond that for which it was originally intended, as could occur if the landowner were to create a major subdivision on a lot abutting the public easement, whether a person could widen the traveled portion of the public easement right away, or whether a person could improve a public easement both for purposes of personal use and to accommodate additional traffic. Position of MMA legal services staff is that the municipality should never should not prevent private parties from maintaining a public easement, but should not act to authorize or condone private maintenance either, and that a municipality may act to prevent a private party from damaging a public easement when it becomes aware of potential damage, as could happen if logging trucks were to use a public easement during month season. And then they go on to privately owned roads. Privately owned is from Maxfield Corner on. That easement was just the fact there was nothing to serve, and the town just stopped doing stuff.
So, Brett? Uh, Gail had an idea, and it sounded like that uh, Mr. Andrews was willing to do it. If the town purchased that road, uh, that gate, from Mr. Andrews, it doesn't matter whether it's... It you would know, be legal. Do, it would be all legal. Correct. Except, what? after what he just read, that has to be decided at a town meeting. The legislative body has to decide to spend that dollar to buy that, or just assuming if you would sell the gate for a dollar, certainly would. The or legislative body that. would have to. <laughs> he could donate that gate and then. Well, it depends on your ask. And you have the right as the, to, as, accept to accept donation. it. You have donation. the right to accept donations from town meeting. And then no lock whatsoever. It would just be a chain around it. But it has to remain with posted signs and fluorescent so people don't hit it. If, if that's legal, I have no problem with that. As long as it's not going to get locked, I don't have a problem. Well, they can't lock it. Is that what I'm just saying? We could lock it. Can we? I believe we could lock it. Um, no, everybody would have to have a key in that. Yeah, okay. yeah I don't want to get into that. That's what actually, I'm saying. I have no, if, if that would be the case, if, if we could legal, I would if the really lock, like to make sure that this is what we can do. Yeah, um, if that's a workable solution. If that's a workable solution, I need to call the attorney. No, call him Call Yeah, ask him. I'll get him a name to Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, if that would work, then yeah. it would be a guarantee nobody could ever lock that gate. I understand you're, as far as not people in and out of there, but that's... Still can't really stop them. No, the only thing right, is, once the precedent comes out that the gate's there and it's not locked, and then yeah. anybody's going to go in there anyway. But so. I, I talked with Mr. Gillette, and he has land that Mr. Armstrong needs to cross. I don't know what. It's not a public access to his property, and because Mr. Gillette really likes the gate there, because it protects his <coughs> camp, protects his camera, he's willing to put that gate across his property, and Mr. Armstrong will have to work out an easement and access to his property, and that's fine. If you want to go that route, and it's a little more complicated, I don't want to inconvenience Mr. Armstrong, but there's always that option. I said, you know, the road is repaired. Now, are we responsible if someone injures the road and we, you know, themselves on the road for oil or something like that because we've done the repairs on the road? Yeah. From what he just yeah. read, you're liable because you did. But there you go. So I'm, that's no, all I'm saying, but it's a catch-22. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, isn't that justification to limit some of the access? Now, if the landowners are fine, but if some yahoos go down there and want to... If it's a public easement, you can't limit it. That's the problem. But the, it's a public easement to private land, okay? It's, it doesn't go anywhere. That's completely irrelevant. That's the problem. And I understand your frustration. But don't you have to prove that you own a public easement, prove that work was done there between Maxfield Corner up after 1965? You'd have to go back in the books and find where somebody went down there and graded or did work. I defy you to do that. I know what those books look like. I understand. All you have to do is find out when it was technically abandoned. If it was abandoned after 1965, it's a public easement. So if you guys take a certain... Now, the trouble with this is it's that you're paying this guy $29 an hour to take his time to sit and go through the books like that? No, to look for I wish. <laughs> well, we put Andrew your Benny's in on it. Um, and we're very into Benny's around here. Uh, you know, but really, I mean, so maybe it behooves us to take a good hard look at the books and satisfy ourselves that maybe there wasn't any work done and that the public easement doesn't exist. Well, I can ask Peter to go through the files again, but we have yeah, found he's the nothing. Yeah, get to look at it. Absolutely. We have found nothing on Grant Road that suggests that... <coughs> and as with the conversation public easement. we had earlier regarding any road, not right. Grant Road, not... When you start talking any small town, rural Maine in the 1960s, what did they document? What do they document in the 50s? I mean, I'm not defending anybody, but you no, know, literally comes you know, I'm going to find it because there's nothing people. there. I yeah, remember right. them digging on yeah, this road. Yeah, right. We do have a book, or it used to be on the shelves in the manager, town manager's office. It goes all the way back to the. I haven't found anything in it yet. I'm still looking. And I mean, and back then they listed boundaries to so and so's driveway. Uh huh. Yeah. Doesn't have all the maintenance in it, though. That's yeah, it does. mentioned some not maintenance on some of them. Not much. Nope. Well, well, just as we're learning. Either way, it's, it's a matter of if there's a simple, if we can determine that that is a simple solution to do, and that's in the best interest of the town, then I would definitely be in favor of talking about that. Well, please, we need to make sure. I'll call MMA. Guys, 
if that's it says right in the roads manual that you can put in if you discontinue or you abandon now statutorily you can put in that you're not retaining the easement it's optional to you yeah, that's correct you, i understand but we're not doing that we it's are doing that today. Today. that's the problem right. this road right if you, if you can find it right um but it does sound like a donation of the gate would be, be a to do workable that. solution i'd be more than happy to do that so and currently the gate is still unlocked i've seen it with the carabiner underneath i I have to tell you, it's pretty hidden. I would, I when I first looked at it, I didn't it's go a, through. It's a, it's a serious gate. I've been down there. I've looked at it. Most people are not going to approach the gate. They're going to think they can't get through. That's right. So that's the whole idea. I suspect it works pretty well. But the thing of it is, before you do this gate bit, you should make sure that it is a public easement. That there is that's that. What I just said. Mm -hmm. I and have because if there yeah, isn't. We need to get the hell out of this all together as a town. Is That's it, what we just said. Yeah. Is, is there any way to to change it from a public easement to a private easement? No. no. You can't do it. No. Not after uh, 2015. Mr. Dobson. Oh, Rick? I'm not familiar with that road myself, but is, is there any property in that right away in that road that might uh, landlock? Somebody's land is awesome. I, I would, couldn't answer you. I don't know. Does landlock anybody at that gate? There's a possibility that when I spoke to Bridie, there was somebody off your property behind a pond or something. Uh, no. We don't know no, for no, sure, uh, but it's in Parkman. When, yeah. No. I don't think no, any of this when landlocked. The, um, <coughs> you get to Mexico the Corner, the road swings, and um, Mr. Archibald, who I believe is passed away since then, used to access some property in that fashion. Yeah. So I'm not really sure if anybody so would be on there. But if I'd like to make a motion to just table this until we can get further information, further research, and then come back and see where to go. Block <laughs> two. Thank you so much. Further that discussion. We meet again on June 14th, or later on we'll be in touch with me. June 14th. Yeah, we have a resolution. Yeah, but as long as he knows how to get a hold of you. Yeah, he does. What's your telephone number? Uh, well, I nine, usually drive out. 949 4986. 949 4986. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Thank you so much. And that was Gail, Jody, Mike. Yep. Yeah. Uh, recall ordinance and Richard Dawson would like to speak. <coughs> Why I had this on the agenda, or asked this to be on the agenda, wasn't so much that I wanted to speak. Um, I wanted to, um, I've been working with a select board and individual citizens trying to come up with a good, solid, legal recall ordinance. And um, for this meeting to discuss, or anybody voice their opinions or discuss what their thoughts on it. So at this point, I'm going to give this last updated document to uh, Mike Walker, the town manager, and I would like him to read the first page, which is a statement for me, and Section, the most important changes would be section three and section four that I would like uh, to get Mike's walk or somebody to read that short section. Section three? Section Excuse me. Uh, section three, definition of. No, no, no. This one. Oh. Did you give me that? No. You want this done? This is section three and four. Okay, three and four. Okay, changes to our attorney drafted ID 52651B, May 27, 2015, the last ordinance presented to the town. Maine state law does not require any of these changes for recall, but I made these changes staying within state statutes and state laws to develop the best ordinance I could not could to protect the citizens and our good, honest selectmen of the town as well. One, removed appointed officials. Two, removed elected officials and changed to officers only. 
I have added the filing of an intent to circulate. I have added an affidavit for intent to circulate. I have added five voters to the affidavit for intent to circulate. I have added a 30-day time limit to circulate. I have added grounds for removal. I have added exceptions to grounds for removal. I have added a public hearing to determine if there is sufficient grounds for removal, all within one meeting to save money, time, and hopefully without the possibility for challenge or litigation. We are one of 44 states that does not require any specific grounds for removal or, or recall of municipal officials. This is a good, solid legal ordinance with grounds, checks, and balance to ensure that, to ensure it is in fact the will of the people to remove the rogue selectmen and at the same time protecting our good, honest selectmen. I have answered all your concerns and stayed within the law, and this is the best I can do. Thank you, Richard R. Dobson, Sr. Moving on to Section 3 of this. Section 3, Grounds for Removal and Instructions for the Meeting Process. An act of misconduct while in office. Violation of oath of office. Failure to perform duties of his or her elective office. Willfully misused, converted, misappropriated, without authority, any public property, public funds, or documents entrusted to or associated with the elective of office to which the officer has been elected or an act in violation of a public trust or violates town ordinances. Number two, there shall be a public hearing to determine if there is sufficient grounds for removal. The officer subject to recall shall have the opportunity to be heard at that public hearing before the recall election and vote for removal. The public hearing must adjourn and then immediately open the recall election, Article 1. Vote to determine if there is sufficient grounds for removal. Number three, if the legislative body, the registered voters, by way of a vote, find that there is not sufficient grounds for removal, the recall petition will be rendered invalid and there will be no recall election. If the legislative body, the registered voters, by way of a vote, find that there is sufficient grounds for removal, the recall election will immediately go to Article 2 for, the, for vote for removal. Section 4, exception. The discretionary performance of a lawful act, a mandatory duty, or not performing any act that, if performed, would subject him or to prosecution for official misconduct shall not constitute grounds for a recall of a municipal officer. If a municipal officer has been subject, subjected to a recall election and not removed thereby, no recall petition shall be filed against that offer unless at least six months have passed since from the date of certification and filing of the previous or last recall petition. And that's where it is. Did I understand correctly that this is open for discussion? We'll have some discussion on this. I think it's, this has been floating around for a long time. Yes. May, I, may I say one thing? Sure, sure go ahead. Mr. Dobson has brought this to the town at least three times. I think this is the third one. The town went to the attorney and put one in on its own. And the town has turned all of them down. Why are we wasting our time? Unless he petitions that into you, you're wasting your time. Well, the town doesn't want it. I understand. And that, that may weigh on our decision. But what he, <coughs> so everybody understands. Uh, what Mr. Dobson would like us to do is to advance this to the warrant so that town meeting warrant. Town, town meeting, meeting warrant, exactly. Next March. So it would be uh, without a petition. Without a, or uh, to, uh, to avoid a petition. That's what he's hoping that this board would do. It's within our jurisdiction to do that. So he's trying to persuade us. And we have yet to discuss this ordinance, even five minutes. So I think we owe it to the town and even to Mr. Dobson to give this a thorough discussion. Um, I have some serious reservations about certain types of recall ordinances. Um, and, uh, but I'm open to some that might work. So, but, and I'm sure Dale and Jody would have similar reactions. But we haven't discussed it at all. So the question is how deep are we going to dive into this today? So, do you discuss it, or do you just move it to the legislative body and let the legislative body decide that? That's well. I think through a vote. With one of my concerns is one of the reasons that I'm uh, 
very open to working with Mr. Thompson uh, is I, I would rather have some input mm -hmm. in what this looks like as opposed to having not. If he is able to secure the signatures that he wants, it'll be, I mean, it has to be written properly, but it's going to be his ordinance, not ours. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I'm, I feel like we should be open to discussing this and maybe we can end up in a place where we're comfortable. Um, I have nothing to discuss. So. I was honestly looking for their that interesting the verbiage of the, the percentages and where they were coming from and things of like that. Has that been changed? Well, that's what I was yeah. trying to find. Um, no, because uh, uh, your last gubernatorial election requires 10% of the voting body. To is that sign. what this one says? Yes, that's where we're at. Well, there's an example. We can well, tweak that. that. We could say it's got to be 20%. You mm -hmm. can't. It supersedes state law and no, There's law. plenty of towns that are at 25%. There's plenty of towns that are at uh, registered voters. Milford's at 25%. I mean, I looked at their the 10% gubernatorial is... There's a lot of towns that are not following that. Okay. That's my question. I just say I it's quoted in state law. 10%. Well, if that's the case, then we couldn't tweak it. But it, I looked at the so other towns may have made a That's why I don't use other okay. towns. I use MMA. <laughs> but if, if that is tweakable, mm -hmm. that would be an area where you could create a higher bar. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Rick. Can I respond to that? Yes. There is a lot of towns that do go with 25% or 20% or whatever, but the state law says this 10% of the to an election, and they do not give us the authority to change that state law. So in saying that, if somebody wanted to, to recall somebody and they didn't re acquire their 25%, their they could challenge it to state, state uh, to court, to state uh, laws, and they would win. So I'm in leaving that out, not changing that, my uh, opinion on that is I'm trying to do something that is going to prevent any challenge or any legal litigation. And I, I think that's a secure reason to, to maintain the state statute values where they do not give us the authority to change it. Well, that's, yeah, we stipulate, if, if you can't change it, then, and those towns are in error, then right. we wouldn't want to be in error. Okay. But, yeah, um, that would be a question for anyone. Yep. Yep. yep, that's so, pretty easy. I mean, because my, my opinion, 10% of gubernatorial. Seems low. Yeah, if you don't like me because I'm wearing a white shirt with a blue stripe today, that means we're having a special town meeting. Well, I mean, you can, anybody can get them signatures. And I just really feel that something like this um, is supposed to be, in my opinion anyway, for the best interest of the town. So it should be, you should be looking for enough signatures to express the best interest of the town not have it low enough so that you don't like the color of the shirt, we're having a special town meeting. It's, that's it's, my call. I don't know if I'm right or if I'm wrong, but that's my own opinion. There's an interesting article in Bangor Daily, I sent it to both of you, uh, in Frenchville. This is like a screenplay for Sagerville. This They passed. They passed an ordinance in March at their town meeting. And it was essentially a no-cause ordinance. It was a political ordinance. If you don't like somebody, and you can get the signatures, you can recall them. And they happen to have a road that everybody's all upset about up there in Frenchville, Pelletier Avenue. Somebody is alleging that public funds are spent on a private way, and poor Mr. Izzy is recalled one month after they passed the We don't need that kind of turmoil. $6,800 we've spent on this stuff so, so far. But the key point of this is this particular ordinance was a political ordinance. It, it had no causation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if I were going to support one, I would feel, I would really want to be ironclad about you'd have That's to have the, done something uh, beyond just irritating me. Right. Look at the one that was written in, it's in the 14 or 15 uh, town report. Eden Peabody wrote it. There's solid things that if you've done these things that, you know, it's mostly malfeasance sort of stuff. Well, you, you mentioned malfeasance. Uh, Rick said be a document. There are states that have kind of adopted this. There, there are much uh, fewer, many more, many less 
Uh, these are recalls, like a uh, factor of 10. Mm -hmm. Because for the most part, when these recalls occur, it's because of politics. Yeah. It's not because yeah. of... Well, you're only in there for three years. You know, deal right. with it. Right, right. You know? So, <laughs> reason for removal right here. If a municipal officer has had three or more written complaints, malfeasance, uh, okay, or the performance of a, well, complaint, uh, or an act that is in violation of public trust, in violation of his or her oath of office, wrongdoing, or if he or she was charged, convicted of a crime that might hold the town liable or cause harm to the town. That's where the recall would pop into play. But you can't have malfeasance in there because, again, um, you're allowing three crimes to be committed with no punishment. <laughs> so I guess. that's not part of the new one. Correct. Um, so it really, I mean, it takes a lot to recall somebody. And 10% doesn't sound by, like much. Do you well, read that? Well, that's Frenchville. That's no, that, if, if you pass, it's very simple. Yeah, but it's 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 Sanger. It is Sanger. <laughs> I, don't read this. I don't read this as political. I read this as uh, something else. I'm not reading it political. What they have, uh, yeah, but they've got even a worse problem than Sangerville. Frenchville's always been. Well, the, with regard to the ordinance, though, there's no, there's no cause. No. You just need the signatures, and everything's put in motion. And those, even the... the, the the select board themselves didn't realize because if they said we can't stop this now, we we passed the ordinance That's in March. He right. got the number of signatures, Oops. and they're all looking at each other like I cannot believe we can't stop this, That's but they can't. Can't. No. Special meeting is scheduled. Town clerk had to do it, and they. I just. So I think we have during enough. our workshop um, on the twenty fourth. That will be great questions at MMA for us. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. To take this ordinance and. I use it as an example and make sure you bring the French bill argument. No, it will just be a great time when we are in that training for elected officials to ask these questions. And we're going to be sitting there with some of the best attorneys at MMA that are teaching this class. And I think that would be very helpful to us. So I think maybe tabling this right now. So let's yep. do that. Yep. Let's Until do we have to officially table this or anything? It's already time? been tabled, but we brought it back, so you need to table it again. Okay. So, so I'll make I a motion you. to table it for Second. further review. In favor? Yeah. Yeah. Mike. Oh, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Rick. Uh, no, you are this one. business. Well, if this is kind of, yeah, I'm a budget committee, planning board appointments, um, I think I'm. Planning board, uh, basically, let's see, public works road maintenance committee. So far, um, I'm not going to be able to go in order because she didn't give it to me in order. So the planning board appointments, can we skip to go to that? Uh, planning board. Well, you've got budget committee first. Yeah, but can I skip budget committee and go to planning board, and then can come just, back to it? Can I we can do planning. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen anything. Usually, we put out something at town meeting, requesting people to sign up for committees. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. But um, I have them now. You have ones that people. Yes, and that's what I'm leading into. I think before we appoint anybody to a committee then we should be putting something out there, put it on the website, that we're looking for committee members. Well, and then right. we can get anybody, everybody to put in for that. So if we can table these appointments until we can do that, I think we would be back. Well, the planning board. We the planning board's already done. That's a board. That's Correct. a board. That's we a board. Board. I need to do the appointments on that. Yep. Um, I was speaking I was for committees. Back to the committees. So I'm okay to swear in all the planning board right now. I'd like a motion. We already have the six that are. Oh, we already have them seated. They're already seated. Okay. They're working tomorrow night. I've got to swear. Yeah, got to, that's a board. That's swear right. yep. One of the two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I make that motion. Yeah. I second. I've got to swear these people in. Yeah. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Um, so the recreation department is the same that it's been. Um, if you want to pass this around. Um, the department, I with, department, is that a committee? or is that, that That's a committee. And they do the recreation field the rest stuff. Of them? There was Jim, the names, please? Yes, Jimmy Bell, 
Jason Higgins, Rhonda Taylor. Now Jimmy's the chairman, Jason's the vice chair, Rhonda Taylor's the treasurer secretary to keep all the stuff together. Heather Wiley, I think, Richard Doherty. Chris Rowell is an alternate, Joseph Chadburn's an alternate, Joseph Ritano Sr. is an alternate, and Joseph Reardon is an alternate, and Richard Dory and Heather Wiley just serve the board. Basically, um, <coughs> Heather's doing grant stuff, and I know that Richard is doing physical work at yep. the park. Um, so we met, uh, what night did I meet? Monday night, for a very long meeting, and those are the people that are interested. And I need to get them sworn in as well, but you can review that. Economic Development Committee, again, is appointed by the board. Uh, Chris Rowell and Diana Bowley. Chris Rowell is the chair, Diana Bowley is vice chair, Rhonda Taylor is on the board. Gail Stutzman is the secretary, Jeremy Ratcliffe is on the board, Matt Bell is an alternate. So it'd be helpful because I have these to go, but Road Committee uh, and Budget Committee I could do without. Um, but these other boards are the same people that have served. Those are in the committees, past. those are not boards. Those are committees. Planning board is something else. So everything else is a committee. Yeah. Correct. Right. I, guess. I would I really I mean if we're if we're gonna seek committees at this time, I think you should be asked putting it out there for the public to see if they want to okay. be a part. Well I did but Terry, can we get together and put something on the website and I will share all these with you? And I think we should keep the people that have made an effort. Uh, I don't disagree. I just want to, I want to be uniform across and I want... Okay. I think we... Because we have no charter. We seek these people. Correct. We create the structure. How many? How long? I noticed you've got people down there as chairs. Do they get to stay chair? I mean, how does that work? Well, that's up to the committee at that point. Perhaps. But, but isn't it every year they're supposed to seat their chair? Every year you're right. going to seat them. So I guess my what I'm getting at is we have committees that are very active, very engaged, and, and do a lot of great work. We have other committees that sometimes go for a year and don't meet. So it seems to me that this would be something that we should add some structure to. to mm -hmm. We don't want a committee with 20 people on it. Okay. The committees actually are, the chairman of that committee is supposed to report back to the board, the chair, board of selectmen in this here, or they could report back to the town manager or just to Mike, because the committee is actually responsible to report back to us. Now, town managers sometimes attend these committee meetings, like myself, only because I've been training them to make sure, like, certificate of liability and everything they're doing has to be done under the auspices of the Board of Selectmen still. And, you know, um, paperwork that's being put out into the public must be reviewed by the town manager. It's part of our prop casualty for inflammatory or liable language. So any piece of paper or document that goes out in front of the general public must have been reviewed by myself, and I probably would have had you three look at it as well. Because it should be reviewed. Should be. Okay, clarify. Should be. Yes. Well, under prop casualty. Yes, I know. It should be reviewed by the town manager. It isn't supposed to just go out. My only thing is I've sat here now for over a year, and when we get out to the agenda, item five, committee reports, it's not very often we have a committee report. But that's where we have to change the that's well, structure. We don't, our committees don't really have a mission state, so maybe they, they are could. advisory. We should let them know what we'd like to be advised on. Or they, we, there should be some structure. So we have a meeting on the 18th. That's one of our roads workshop. We could talk about committees. Well, I'm point. wondering if we had a specifically a workshop for committees, and we invite the people who are interested in a committee and talking about a, a structure. Do you want to do that on the 18th? Sure. I'll do it as soon as, sure. soon as, soon as we can. Yeah. One thing I would like, and I don't know if it, we technically can because I don't know the ruling on committees, but I would like to see people sign up and then express, you know, what's their experience and why do they want to be on the committee. Because let's just throw this out there as an example. You get 30 people sign up for a committee, and out of the 30, you've got, to me, a committee is no more, it's like an unpaid job. You should be putting the people on committees that have, I'm not saying a specific background for it, but at least should have knowledge to help that committee. Yeah. 
So are you making a motion to table this to the 18th, or was that Jody first? I'll make the motion. So yeah. we're going to have a workshop on the 18th. Do you have a workshop already scheduled? Yes. Yeah. Well, is that going to be sufficient, or should we have a separate one for this? No, it will be sufficient. We can cover everything. Okay. I'm getting the numbers for you and stuff so you can look at towards bidding for the roads. So you're going to have to digest that information. Peter's okay. been working on that. And then at the same time for committees, again, we don't have a charter, so the board's in charge of this. I went right into your municipal offers manual. Was it Chapter 6 or 7? I was in for that. can't remember. <laughs> No, you're, you're, it was very in there. It's very, it's very clear. clear that the board has the responsibility, and it's recommended around five people. I think planning board is six people. Yep. So you basically, that's, that's a board, not a that's committee. That's a board, not very a committee. Different. So okay. that can stay at the six. But the other ones, you're looking at committees of five with two alternates usually. These other ones had a few extras, so the alternates did want to stay, but that is up to the board. So we'll cover that on the 18th. So <coughs> that was your Jody. motion? Yeah. Well, go go ahead. Ahead. No, she motioned that. Jody? Yep. I'll second it. Okay. But I mean, just because people can sign up for a committee, and if, say, we do a five or even a seven with your two alternates, whatever, whatever number works best or however, those people can still have an active role and be a part. It's no different than here. I mean, Everyone's we sit here, this, everybody's right? a part of what we're doing. And that's how it should be. Yeah. And but I. I but mean, when you get into a vote, very large. And right. Yeah. I think that one probably should be 6 o'clock. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to have to know all sorts of people who want to be on 6 and yep. I'll change that. I yeah. So. Okay. And 18th? Terry and I on will work. On the 18th. What, Chummy? I got a question. Go, go ahead, Chummy. Do the London board meet tomorrow night or not? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes we, we did. Right. You're in. You can come You'll in be tomorrow. I'll, I'll, swear tomorrow. I'll swear at you, yes. Yeah, I'm in the back. I can well, you see the back there. Now I'll swear you in, Chummy. Um, yes, I don't swear. No, I've never sworn at you yet. All right. So we're all set on that. This is Cynthia's one. Oh, look. Thank you. I'm, I'm just wondering if this is all of the boards and all of the committees. And That's yeah. all part of, I don't think we're going to reach out to all of them. That's the other is the Historical Society. I don't have that one on here. That's that appeals board. Yeah. Uh, the appeals board is the same that we've had. Those are boards. Yeah, those are boards. And those are you've are those have already been sworn at. Right. We're talking about committees. Committees. Right. committees only. We're looking at the committees that help us do yeah. our job. Right. I'm on the appeals board. She's on the appeals board. Right. Board. Right. right. It's not a committee. Sworn in. No, that's what been there to do for like two years. That's Alvina. So <coughs> you've got to come in and we have to do those swearing in. This, no, this is just committees. Yeah. And I don't know how to get all these people in to well, do this. I would go There's to all so their chairs. I would go all to their chairs. And as say, far as for what? You mean the committees? To get everybody together so we can swear them all in. I wouldn't. Well, no, if we're going to review board. all these coming up, I wouldn't. Well, no, for the boards the that boards I have. Instead. The boards that you have, then, yeah, I mean, you should, Alvina should know everybody's phone numbers. It's on the yeah, yeah, contact the chair and have the chair <coughs> to tell them yeah. they need to come in. I know that Jerry always said, Jody, your term is up. You need to go in and yeah. get sworn in. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did that with me. Right. So there are some chairs that do take care of it. So. I, I'm on several boards and several committees, and this is the first I've heard of anything. And the only reason I heard about it was I was standing in the library when the town manager walked in and said this was happening. I have computer, but I do not have Wi-Fi, and so I can't rely on my computer to get this information. I go to the, the town, the post office, and pick up my mail, but not every day. And sometimes I find something I understand up there, and sometimes <laughs> I don't. So I feel like I'm really poorly informed. And I hear you people speaking about structure and, and things like that, and I commend you for trying to do that. But it feels to me like you're rushing through stuff, and, and I'm just being left behind. That's why we want to work. That's why, like, the workshop for the committees, because when this all went on there, that was my, you know, I don't know of anybody exactly. that's had the opportunity to say they want to do it. I mean, exactly. there are people that know that we do this, so yes. They have called up, but not called up in emails. And yes. We haven't had a consistent process. One year right. you sign up at a town meeting, the next year there's That's no sign what up. I wanted. I might hear people who think they're already on a committee. The problem that was found. The problem that was found with this is that 
some of this stuff is lacking, so we're trying to reestablish municipal government to make sure everything is being done correctly. And that's the big problem. And 25 people on a board is a little strenuous oh to get all the information you need in a short amount of time. So, yes? That makes sense. <clears throat> but all of us have always done it the old way, and we're not being told what the new way is going to be. So we're just... Well, that's why... The workshop is going to be. Right, and that's why it's on this agenda for new business for the board. I did not expect to do appointments tonight because there weren't even full, some of them. Okay. So... Um, but everybody has done that. But we do need a workshop in order to figure this out because tonight isn't enough time. And plus, this there should be. This is more back and forth than you would normally have in a workshop. We can all brainstorm, right? And, and that's what we're looking yeah. is to follow the law. And hopefully, we would come out of that but, workshop, come to the next meeting, right? And take some. Speaking action. to Cynthia's concern with regard to disseminating the information, somebody like Cynthia who who says she doesn't have Wi-Fi, so, because what we're trying to do, and Terry's doing an amazing job, is getting the website so that it's informational and up-to-date so that you can go there. But for people who don't have Wi-Fi or don't use their computers for, to glean that information, we need to be able to disseminate that information, because how are they going to find out that we're having a workshop? And I that's going to have to come out of paper posting of the meeting at the local locations and maybe I'll start posting on the library door. We have it on the front door, but we posted AE. What's the market on the top of the hill? Yeah, um, the, the country, country time. time. Oh, country yeah, time. Yeah. I post at country time, so right when you walk in the door above the frog <coughs> parking at you is the agenda. She puts it right on the Coke or Pepsi uh, wall right there uh, when you walk in. And then um, post office. AE Robinson and the post office. Um, for the trash thing, I printed flyers and took it to all the businesses in town. But the other ones, those are the most popular. And uh, I can always put an agenda out and just have it available on the library table as long as Linda provides me permission on the sale table right there at the front as well. Yes? All due respect, I'm hearing a lot of talk about workshops in the future that you're going to be attending. Are you a town manager? Yeah. yeah. You're going to be our town manager? You're our permanent town manager? No. Okay, who is? He's an interim town manager right now. Okay, but, but uh, actually this is not the forum for that. Well, no, I'm just hearing that he's going to be attending all these things down the road, but he's not even going to be here. Well, he, these he will workshops. be here for everything that we're being discussed. Okay. Right. I'm here to work with the workshops for them, and this is only in the month of May right now. Uh, we done? Well, I have one more question. <laughs> so you're thinking about having a meeting 6 p.m. on the 18th? We've scheduled it, yes. Okay. That's really short notice. Are you, do you really think that's going to work? And what if people miss that meeting? Uh, yeah, uh, the reason I want to do it quickly was because I wanted to get these committees set up. Okay. I've got people asking to be appointed, and I don't, have any, I don't really know... How many people are on the committee? So on that date, the 18th at 6 p.m., are you going to be asking for people to sign up for those what I Right now. Hmm? Right now. Right. From this day going forward until then, we're going to be asking people to sign up. We want to know the interest. Mm -hmm. That's okay. why, I mean, and that, like I said, I don't know if we can technically do it. Are we allowed to do it? Are we allowed to say, yes, Dale Gray, I want to sign up for this committee. These are my people have attributes. Me. This is my interest or why I want to be on it. People have emailed me, but they also have called. Uh, I've received letters, so I have those requests that I've already had. That's what I came up with for a list. So when we get it advertised on the website, maybe it can flash or something. Um, then they can still continue to call in. My number is 876-2808, and I have a voicemail. And... Um, and Alvina answers, Doreen sometimes answers, mm -hmm. but all we're going to do is keep writing down who wants to be on which committees at this time. Do we, do we have a contact for each committee at this time, a contact name that we could contact mm -hmm. that one person to yeah, at Alvina least? should have all the chairs. Yeah, yeah to I, at least let them know that we are doing this workshop so that they can be here. They will all be notified. They all have emails to the people that are on their committees. Right. 
So the first thing I'll do tomorrow, Diana Valley's the Historical Society, and Chris Rowell. Usually Diana handles everything. Rick Pellerin's uh, chair of the Budget Committee and the Road Committee. So he can make contacts that way, but we'll put it out on the web and we'll make sure everything has everyone has an opportunity to sign up. So, okay? And I still have an open motion to table these until the 18th. Second. No, it's first and second, and I need oh, a vote. Oh, I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. Do you vote? If the motion was made. Jody made it. Dale seconded. Now we've had discussion. You're Are wrong. we in discussion? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And we're good. Yes. Okay. Cemetery deeds. Yes. I need each of you as selectmen mm -hmm. to sign these. These are legal documents. Um, there's a first page, Jody, and there's a second page. So I'm just going to leave this clipped. This is okay. from Alvina and Doreen. And if you can do that. So, so we've sold some seven. Two. Oh, wow. Uh, perpetual cares. That's why they're deeded. Too much fun. Cemetery deed for us. <laughs> really? I have a meeting after see, this, so I don't really want to hear it's that. It's just six o'clock. It's perfect. Now you can eat supper. Thank, Thank you. Good night. I'm Thank happy. You. Very, Good. very much. You're happy? I am. Can I write yeah. that on the calendar? I should. You should just walk this down. Thank, Thank you, Melissa. Uh, Thank you for your input. Can I move on to the next one? Yeah, the next time? Uh, MA. MMA risk management inspection. We had an inspection here uh, back in March when I first, well, I was well, my second month, but March 9th we had uh, Robert Thomas from MMA show up. Uh, that light right up there was defective. That's already been corrected. Uh, and I have to respond to this by 728 of 2017. The trip hazard for the floor drain in the fire department is going to have a small drain put in and they're filling that with cement. Oh, and the grid is coming out permanently. Um, so that's on track right now as well. So, And that was the height of inspection of all our buildings of uh, issues at this time. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, the next thing is uh, Superintendent of Schools, there was a letter circulated. Shall I read it for you? Please. Okay. Dear Headmaster Shuri, Board of Trustees, Foxcraft Academy, I am writing on behalf of the Board of Directors of SAD4 in response to your letter of March 31st, 2017. SAD4 has been working for two years to find short-term, long-term solutions for our district that would benefit both, of the, both the students and the taxpayers of the district. We first explored through conversations with the board chair of SAD 68 and headmaster Shorey ways to work together. After canceled meetings due to inclement weather, the boards of SAD 4 and SAD 68 were able to meet in late spring 2016. Included at this meeting were current superintendents and incoming superintendent and a past superintendent as well as administration from both districts. At the conclusion of the meeting, it was determined that SAD 68 had no services or positions to share with SAD4 district-wide. In the fall of 2016, SAD 46 superintendent reached out to SAD4 to see if there was any short or long-term solutions that would benefit both pre-K to 12 districts. Because the two districts have similar socioeconomic makeup, we have found several programs and positions to explore working together SAD4 certainly appreciates your letter of awareness and recognition, but we are working with another district at this time. It is our belief our current direction will open up opportunities for all students in our districts. We would like to keep the door open for any conversation between our three districts that will benefit all the students pre k through grade 16. It's supposed to be grade 12. Anyways, and Kirkpatrick, the superintendent. That's all that was. In case anybody doesn't know, Ann Kirkpatrick has given her notice. Yes. The end has at least a month's worth of vacation. Oh, jeez. Um, is there anything? The last number that I heard mm -hmm. was an interim superintendent. It's $500 per day. Oh. Uh, okay. Are we done with that item? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that what you're getting? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, isn't that what you're getting? 
Yeah, 500 bucks a day. Uh, I'm kind of thinking of going up there and helping them cut that budget. <laughs> Board of Assessors. Nothing. Nothing. Um, well, I'm gonna, is there anything beyond? No, we just need to go down and remind everyone that we do have a two, two, May 24th meeting, and then the board needs to decide on the next meeting on June 14th uh, what time they would like that. Okay. So, um, and then you have an executive session to go into. Correct. So, so, do you want to decide on the next time for the next meeting? I, I mean, I don't have any problem with making it later. I mean, it, it, Dale was have, right. The turnout was astounding. It, it was. It was. But, <laughs> just, but I, I mean, whatever. I don't. I do not want that to be a sticking point. Historically, we've had, and normally it's at. I mean, but we've had occasions where uh, the town manager or an employee is needed for something, and they end up hanging around the town for an hour and a half. And in some cases, we pay them overtime. In the wintertime, right. we're paying them overtime to come in and, you know. Right. Whereas. In which I understand that people work, but we all work. Right. Um, so uh, that was kind of the thought process. Right. 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 And and your point, um, um, or someone's point, um, that had said that they liked what time it was, was that, um, you know, they work a shift that they can never come to the town meeting. I'm a guard and, at Charleston. I never get to your meetings. That's right. And or they're a different shift over, you know, at True or, or, or wherever. Um, so, so, you know, um, Personally, I like the four o'clock, but but um, I, again, I don't want it to be a, a sticky. Like I I work for the Small Enterprise Growth Fund. We have monthly meetings with board of directors, open to the public. Our meetings are from eight thirty in the morning until eleven thirty. If someone wants to be here, they make their way there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in Augusta, every day, not every day, but while the legislature's in session, there are meetings all day, mm -hmm. every day. They're public meetings. You want to go to one? You get there. We'll right. split it. I'll make a motion to make the next meeting at five. What time? Five. I'll second that. We'll, we'll try, try it. it. We'll try, try it. it. I mean, yep. That's and you know what? Uh, if they complain for six, I then. guarantee you we're going to get complaints for six. Okay. Five. Then five is, I, I, the reason I did that I on the workshop is we have this wide swath of people that do these committees, and I just wanted to give them extra time to come in. But I think five is. Really fair. Right, and, and and going back to the four o'clock. I mean, I like the fact that we're. It's not right. going to be. I mean, we don't need two I, hours. I love yeah. it. You know, <laughs> I and, would hate to start this at six. We're right. usually right. here at eight thirty at night to nine o'clock when we're. Driving. Right, and right. in the middle of the winter when it's starting to snow and you don't know what's. It's it's wonderful. I think I. I Let's try five. Let's. I mean, yeah. that's my motion. The board, second. The board has the right to. If we try and five, we will go back to four. We they can. can do that. Yeah. May I make a comment? Yes. Pick something and stick to it and publicize it, and I don't think it matters. I totally agree. Stick to your guns. <coughs> yeah. I'm not, a, I mean, to me, honestly, it doesn't, no, I mean, to me, four or five doesn't matter. Then, I would much rather be then, no later than five because second. that way there it works for everything to do with the town. I'm and just saying stick to it so that yeah. if, if it's Tuesday at four o'clock, it's the second Tuesday at four o'clock, I know. You well, yeah, they have it. they're having a select board meeting. Do I want to be there? Right. Look at each other. No, I, 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 I agree that we, yeah. consistency would be good. All uh, my meetings are the fourth Monday at 8 30. Mm -hmm. And they all know. Mm -hmm. May I make oh, a comment, please? Sure. Go ahead, Lynn. I, I, I'm sure Cynthia has seen times that if we start at 6 30, sometimes it's, we get out at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. 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 And and I'm, I'm, the very first meeting I ever went to in 93, <laughs> I said, What the hell have I gotten myself? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just just an FYI. I had to leave work early today to be here. Yeah. Right. So right. I'm will. I mean, I made that commitment. That's part of. But knowing that we're going to be here a couple hours, mm -hmm. I would just as soon leave work a little early to get this right. rolling, right. rather than. So do you want to stick with four? Yeah, I'm not. I, I won't second it. Let's okay. let's keep driving at four. <laughs> But <laughs> well, you're going to stick with it this time, right? Okay, maybe. Well, no, it's, it's the first time we've done this. I'm feeling yeah, the up. I understand the appeal, but it's to me, it's not a lot different than saying, calling the athletic director and saying, "Hey, you know, your soccer games are way too early. I can't get to them." Right. Like, All right. Well, I don't know. I've been sorry. to. Yeah. I've been to selectman yeah. meetings at 7:30 in the morning. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of towns that do them at 8, 10, 8 in the morning. I know. I'm. I'm fresher at 4 o'clock than at 6.30, you know, I mean, you know, so. Plus we can go home and eat after the meeting. Yeah, yeah. 
I, Except okay. for when I get another. So meeting. you still want the committee meeting at six p.m. for workshop? Yes. That will yes, allow us a better turnout. Yes. Uh, and then our training is at two o'clock on the twenty-fourth. Here to go. Show up here. Correct. But the other yeah. thing too, though, is the workshop is where you really need more involvement. In what, I mean, right. This meeting is supposed to be a business meeting. It's not supposed to be. I mean, we allow a lot of this, but that's not what the meeting is really. We were very flexible because of the, the roads, but normally I really would rather this be a discussion between the three of us. Right. That's what this, and the workshops are the opposite. Four. Right. Four. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the workshops are the right. opposite. Right. So we need to be right. available for yeah. when the. Okay. That's set in stone. We're good. Okay. Now you're ready for your executive session. I think okay. what you guys are finding is a change. Yes, change yes. is not always <laughs> right. Right. So. right, right, and you're going to get your bitters and complainers. Right, right, and gonna, right. You can't make everybody you happy. No, no. You can't make, you to, make your people happy. No, I don't think so. All right, six p.m. Yes. Yes. on the eighteenth. Okay. I'm good. Let as many people know as you can. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, that's fine. So, um, I hear this. We need that recorder. Can we, uh, I know. Can I have the recorder, please? Um, we are going to go in. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can we change rooms? I, yeah, I can get you into the library if you'd Is like. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. That way I can clean this up. Well, the only the only reason why I'm asking that is tonight was already scheduled to be the first EDB meeting oh. at six thirty. Oh. In this room. In this room. Okay. So okay. If we could have Matt's be a lot more than four. Executive <laughs> session. <laughs> what time? Have you voted? Executive, executive session. Five fifty-eight. Yeah, I don't have a computer. How do I get all this information? That was Cynthia's question too. Yeah. I just need you to write um, down here in. Now, if I go into and then the office, out. I would have never that. known about okay. tonight. Yep. I, mean, I just need the time. The time is. They're going right now. I don't go there. I don't go to post office. We're trying to vote for executive. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. We have to go into executive session. Uh, and the time is. 5:58. Yes, I wrote that down. Okay. Just write the out for me and, and let me stop. Motion to go into executive session.